All right, ready to go. We are going to take the differential equations and apply them to real world examples. You've done this already. You did it last year in pre-calc, but now we're gonna come off the porch and run with the big dogs, okay? That involves quite a bit of calculus and my clicker to work. Separable differential equations and the laws of growth and decay. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah. yeah, a lot of these problems are not fun. They're death and destruction. Okay, we've got some radiation going on. We've got the spread of bacteria going on. But then we do have a nice cup of coffee, which we'll get to at the end. You remember the Pert equation from last year, yes? <laughs> kind of. We've got not really. Or she does and she just doesn't want to relive it. That could be the other oh, possibility. Yeah. Last year in pre-calculus, you worked with the Pert equation quite a bit, except very differently than the way we're going to do it. You just took a Pert equation, you plugged and chugged and you solved. For us, it's going to be a little bit more exciting. Yeah, because we're going to use some calculus to derive that Pert equation for each problem. And then remember, kids, after everything that's happened, believe in yourself because I believe in you. Thank you Mr. You're welcome, Max. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. So the Pert equation. Now, last year, depending on how your teacher did this, they may have had A equals P E to the RT. It can be written in a couple different forms. This is how I've traditionally learned it, where P naught is your starting. Oh, wait, I got this. Yeah. So P is the final amount. P naught is your starting amount. E is just E. Anybody remember how big E is? 2.7 something. That's, you just got that? 2.7? Come on. 2.7139. Jackson. There's like a 17. Yeah, one eight, one Is it 2.7182828182828? Good, 4590, 45. Okay, good. Or 2.7 something. Yeah. All right, R is the growth and decay rate. If R is positive, it's a growth. If R is negative, it's a decay. And then T is time. Okay. Some other forms of the PERT equation are down at the bottom there. C equals E to the KT, or what we're going to use is dy over dt equals CY. This is gonna be fun. I love these problems. Okay, exponential growth, the walking dead is an example of exponential growth. Are you all with me on that? Yeah. One person becomes a zombie, they bite two people, those two people bite two people, those two people bite two people, next thing you know you've got a hit TV show. The spread of disease usually follows an exponential growth pattern. One person gives it to two or three people, they give it to two or three people, next thing you know we're learning from home. Decay is when things disappear. I don't know, um, how many of you are in AP Chem? Two in here, at home? Yeah, thank you Dylan, appreciate the excitement. Um, have you talked about decay in Chem yet? Um, Radioactive decay? Yeah. Okay. We use one. You use this? Yeah. Do you do the calculus or just go right to PERT? Is this Berquist? Oh, we're gonna fight now. <laughs> Is she foo fooing my calculus? Well, she, you can read the full document and it tells you all the calculus, but we don't, like, in, the, in AP Chem, we don't really use the calculus. That's okay. Is she foo fooing my calculus? Well, she's not taking calculus. Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> I'm gonna snap her in half. <laughs> I could take her, right? She's not that tough. I could take her, right? Yeah, she could roundhouse kick me right upside the head with that metal plate. I wouldn't stand a chance. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's talk about the spread of bacteria first. We've got some bacteria sitting in a culture. In fact, we happen to know, starting, that we have 600 of those puppies. And then, two hours later, we've got 1,800. Assuming that the rate of increase is directly proportional to the number of bacteria present, find blah, 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 blah. Okay, so if we had a PERT equation, we would solve this very differently because we know that 600 is our starting amount. We know that 1,800 is our ending amount. We know the time is equal to two, and therefore that only leaves us one variable. For those of you that are visual learners, we would have this. 1,800 is equal to 600 e to the uh, r times two. That's easy. One variable, solve that, blah, 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 life's grand. However, in calculus, we don't have that luxury because we're gonna start from scratch. Where do we start from is right here. Okay. We have something called a proportionality constant. For me, I'm going to use K, because I like to be a rebel and not use C. Now, now you want to fight? We can go. I like to let me see myself. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe later. Okay, so the rate of increase, as soon as you see the word rate in calculus, you know that that is a derivative. So I'm going to use B for the number of bacteria. Bacteria. I'm going to use K for the uh, proportionality constant. So I get something that says DB DT is equal to KB. The rate of increase of the bacteria, and the implication is in, uh, rate is number over time, is directly proportional to the bacteria present. Okay. That's our starting equation. It's not always going to be that exact equation, but it will be something similar to that. And that's why I've got three examples, so you can see some variations. Now we kick into some calculus here. Now it becomes a separable differential equation. Okay, now remember, separable differential equation, you must separate the differentials. There are a couple different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you how I like to do it. I cross multiply and get KDT is equal to BDB. I could take the K with me over by the B, but this is more of a traditional approach to it. This is how most people will do it. You'll see why in a second. Okay, so far. Wait, what, are the, aren't those two multiplied by each other, the KB? Are yeah, so I just left the K there. I multiplied DT over on one side and divide. Oops, I screwed up. I didn't really see that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this whole math thing is just so confusing for me. I struggle every day, so yeah. That's a B. 1 over B, DB, is equal to K, DT. I make mistakes, too. <laughs> Take the integral of both sides, because I want to get rid of the differentials. So here's where you have to be careful. What's your variable on each side of the equation? OK, so let's deal with the, uh, the left-hand side first. That's easy. What's the antiderivative of 1 over B? natural log of b. Technically speaking, it's the natural log of the absolute value of b. Do I need the absolute value? Good. I, why not? I could put it there. It's not going to hurt anybody, but I'm going to be sneaky about it and get rid of it. What allows me to get rid of it? Correct. You can't have negative bacteria. That makes no sense. So I don't want to have to deal with it later, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Be careful with that, though, because if you're doing a problem where that value can be negative, you have to leave it there. Okay, right-hand side. What's the antiderivative of KDT? First of all, what's the variable? T. So what's the antiderivative of K with respect to T? KT. Very good. 
What am I missing? Wait, so do we just treat k as like a number? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the proportionality constant is some number. We don't know what it is. Oh, okay. It varies from problem to problem. Okay. What, I, th I thought somebody said it. Plus c. Plus c, right. So we talked about this before when we first, uh, the other day when I did separable differential equations. We have to figure out where to put the c, so I'm going to attach it to the t and put it just on that side. Okay. Again, that's not the only way to do it, but that is the standard. Okay, now, I'm sorry? No, I'm not done yet because I haven't solved for b yet. I'm almost there. How do I solve for b? You do the e to the trick. What's e to the natural log of b? Hot diggity. Okay, now, the left-hand side. How do we deal with this e to the c? So to answer that question, let's talk about this. What's that equal to? x to the fifth. So we add the exponents, right? Okay, so if I had x to the seventh, couldn't I write x to the seventh as x to the fourth plus three? Right? Which would be the same thing as x to the fourth times x cubed. So what I'm going to do is, why do I care about that? Because I've got this e to the c wrapped up here as a plus, what it's going to allow me to do is take this plus c yep, and write that as e to the kt times e to the c. Does that make sense? Good. What's e to the c? C. C. Good. No matter what you do to a constant, it's still just going to be a constant. C plus C, C. C squared, C. Yeah. Square root of C, C. E to the C, C. Uh, why, why can you split up that? Like, what the because when I explain what the x squared and x cubed, you add the exponents when it's multiplication. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, after all of that work, which is fairly frustrating, you realize, oh wait, that's the PERT equation. Yeah, it is. But for every problem, we're going to be deriving the PERT equation. Okay. So instead of just writing it, we have to do that every single time. Wait, so they can be the exact same thing every time, though? No. Oh. Similar, but not exact. Okay. That's why I have three examples. How are we doing for time? Oh. We're all the time. Okay, so that all of that work, that's A. Part B. Find the number of bacteria after four hours. Okay, so what do I know? Um, what I don't know is K, so I'm going to start by solving for K using the information that I have in the problem, and that is I have 1,800 bacteria when I started with 600 after two hours. I haven't answered part B yet for four hours. I need to find what the growth rate is. Three is equal to E to the 2K. Paige, what do I do next? Overthinking it. Easier. Think simply. Bingo! Natural log of tree is equal to 2k. Running out of room here, so k is equal to the natural log of 3 divided by 2. Okay, now if you plug that into your calculator, natural log of 3 divided by 2 is a number 0.54930614431443. Do not approximate that number store it, or use it as a natural log of 3 over 2. So for instance, on my calculator, I have 
0 0.5430614. I'm going to store that into, just because I'm feeling fancies in my panties, I'm going to store it into K. So now if I need it, it's stored in K. Last step is to answer the question for part B, which is, how much do I have after four hours? Uh, I'm gonna erase a little bit over here since we're done with this. And I would do, uh, 600 e to the 0.549 times four, and that will equal B. My starting amount doesn't change. I, my time is changing to be four hours. And again, I'm not gonna use 0.549, I'm gonna use the K value on my calculator. E raised to the K times four, close parentheses, times 600 is 5,400 bacteria. Don't forget your units. All of part B is pre-calc stuff. The calculus happens in part A. Questions from anybody? Okay, let's talk about radiation. Scary stuff. Uh, clicker. Okay, for those of you that don't understand how radiation works, um, radioactive material decays over time, meaning it just disappears. It never completely goes away, if I understand it correctly. Chem people, feel free to correct me if I misspeak, but I kind of do care about chemistry, as opposed to the chemistry teacher who just doesn't care about calculus, which I'll bring it up with her later. <laughs> so if you have a big honking mound of radioactive material, let's suppose you steal 10 pounds of plutonium. If you just leave that plutonium sitting there, it disappears over time. It's called radioactive decay. So for instance, in Chernobyl, do you all know what Cherno that Chernobyl so is? Bad. Right. Oh, that okay. was so bad. Chernobyl uh, is a place in Russia where that had a nuclear reactor that melted down in the 70s, I think late 70s, early 80s, I'm not sure, which basically irradiated, irradiated a large portion of um, Russia. For those of you that play Call of Duty, I believe it was highlighted in uh, one of the Call of Duty games. It was actually one of the maps. Sidebar, in case you're interested. Do you wear the radiation gloves like on the trees? Like they're red, yeah. like bright red. So they've noticed all kinds of weird things are happening. That was about, let's say it was about 50 years ago. And when that happened, you still can't really go into that area safely because you're exposed to radiation. And radioactive material has a half-life. So for instance, we're gonna talk about radium. Radium has a half-life of 1,600 years. What does that mean? Anybody wanna take a shot at answering that question? Go, yeah. So, Loud so they can hear you. So if it has a half-life of 1,600 years, that means half of however much radium you have, so say you have one unit of radium, it will take 1,600 years for half of it to be gone. So that means then you'd have like 0.5 radium after 1,600 years, but that stays constant, so. Correct. Whenever so you're taking half of half of half of half of half, which never reaches zero. Yeah. So there's always gonna be some radium there. Sometimes it's not a half. Hey Siri. No, it doesn't. What's the half-life of plutonium? It literally, it's just a Here's an answer from wikipedia.org. Plutonium 238 has a half-life of 87.7 .7 years. Okay, so plutonium has a much smaller half-life, and I believe most of the meltdown at Chernobyl was plutonium-based. So it takes 87 years for half of that radioactivity to disappear. That follows an exponential curve. So it's the opposite of what we did with bacteria. Bacteria was a growth, this will be a decay. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Radium exponentially uh, decays exponentially and has a half-life of 1,600 years. Find the amount Y remaining of five milligrams of pure radium, your radium after T years. When will the amount remaining be 20 milligrams? Okay, so its decay rate, DRDT, 
is equal to k times r. The amount of radium over time is proportional to the value of radium. Okay, so again, k is our um, proportionality constant. And we start with a rate. Now, it's, this problem is not as explicit, whoops, is not as explicit as the previous problem where it flat out tells you the rate of increase. You know, they use the word like rate. This one is a little bit more subtle. I'm gonna go through this a, a lot quicker than we did the last one because the procedure becomes very similar. Okay, so I separate the variables. One over R dr, whoops, dr is equal to K dt. Take the antiderivative of both sides. The natural log of R is equal to KT plus C. Again, radium can't be negative. You can't have a negative amount of radium, so you, we can drop the absolute value bars there. Do the E2 trick. R is equal to C E to the KT. This is the step that many of you are just going to skip over but it's important that you understand how I'm going from that step using that x squared times x cubed. Question? Yeah, I didn't ask last time, but um, why, why does uh, like the derivative of k just equal kt? Because the variable is t. So think of that k as like 2. The antiderivative of 2 is 2k, or 2x. Oh, OK. Even though it's just a constant? It's Correct. The antiderivative of a constant is a linear term. Okay. So we got this. Big deal. I got to solve for some stuff. Okay, so what do I know? Now, here's the thing about half-life. If I forget about the questions from A and B, we can still solve for some things because we know that we're going to lose half of what we need. What do I mean by that? That means that I'm going to forget about what it says in A and B, and I'm just going to figure out some stuff. So I start with an amount of radium. Uh, Kaylee, how much do you want to start with? Uh, 100. 100. So we have 100 tons of radium. Okay. After 1,600 years, how much will I have left? 50. Bingo. That's why you're in calculus. We start with 100, e to the kt. We get that. Okay. Actually, I made a mistake there. e to the 1,600 K. Now, what allows me to just say to Kaylee, hey, Kaylee, how much radium do you want? Because what's the first step in solving for K? What am I going to do? Hmm? That's a bit? Divide. Divide. Right. Is that what you said? No. What did you say? Take Not yet. That's yeah. coming next. Okay. When I divide, I'll get this. Now, suppose Kaylee said, oh no, we have 20 pounds of radium. Well, after 1,600 years, we'd have 10. No matter what starting amount you begin with, this is gonna turn into a half. Okay, okay what do I do next? Natural log. You bet you do. Natural log of 1 half equals 1,600 K, and therefore K is equal to the natural log of 1 half divided by 1,600. Natural log of 1 half divided by 1,600. Be careful with parentheses. It's a very small number. And it's negative, which is good. It takes a long time for radium to disappear. And it's decaying, so the number should be negative. It's approximately uh, negative, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, point zero 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 four. 3, 3, 2, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Because I'm just going to store it in 2K. All right, so let's take a... Yeah. So part A, it looks like the amount Y over 150 milligrams is C D fifty. Yes. Okay. So what we're doing now is I'm just getting a general equation, and then we're going to go into the problems. Okay. okay. Um, what? Yes. Oh, well, I don't understand. Like, so it's just a simple, um, like, exponential equation, right? So why, why do we need, like, all the, like, other stuff, like the natural logs and the cubes and stuff? 
So this isn't it just like constant throughout the whole entire. Is what a constant? Like, like just the um, like the GX problem. Like once you solve for it, it's just going to be. Well, that's what we did. We had to find out what the exponent is. We had to solve oh, for k. Yeah. Now, could you look up the uh, decay um, constant for radium? Yeah, it's in a chart somewhere. Okay, but we're doing the math here. Now, let me take a sidebar for a second. There's a happier part to these types of problems, and that's called a doubling problem. So here's a question you might want to ask yourself. Uh, where are my seniors? Okay, so uh, Josie, let's say uh, when you graduate in May, you, uh, you have a big graduation party where everybody's safe, and you uh, end of the night's over, and you all of a sudden realize that people were very generous, and they gave you a total of $2,500 cash. And uh, you're on a full scholarship. You don't need the $2,500. You're going to invest it. And the question is, how long will it take me to take you for that $2,500 to turn into $5,000? So that's a doubling problem, and it's fairly common in investments. How long will it take me to double my growth? Sorry. How long will it take for the growth to double is what I meant to say. Now, there's some problems with that in the real world. You're not going to find somebody that will pay you interest in an exponential um, manner. It would be nice. I'd be rich, but it ain't going to happen. It's still a conceptual thing. And the only thing that changes is my final amount is twice as big as my starting amount. So for the problem with Josie, we would turn that into 2,500, and the ending amount would be 5,000. You also don't need to know the starting amount because instead of this being a one half, it's going to be a two for a doubling problem. Okay, different type of problem, but I wanted to talk about it. And our K value would be positive because it's a growth. Okay, but it is a similar type of problem. Okay, so now what I know is if I move into A, I'm going to raise some stuff so I have some working room here. Now I know how much I'm starting with. As Max mentioned, my starting amount is, what did you say it was? 50 milligrams of radium. That's a lot, by the way. This is going to kill everybody. Okay, so Y, which is our ending amount, is 50 times E to the negative 0.0004332T. Again, let me stress, I am just writing an approximate value for K up there. I'm going to use the stored value in my calculations. There's my general PERT equation. So I'm done with the calculus. Now I can do the pre-calculus. Um, so I have my formula, there we go. I have two variables there. How much radium do I end up with and how much time does it take? So notice that part B changes the, flips the script if you will. On the last problem we talked about time, this time we're talking about quantity. So how long does it take for the amount to reduce to 20 milligrams? Now why is that relevant? Okay, here's how it's relevant. We know after Chernobyl melted down how much radiation there was at Chernobyl. That's a measurable quantity. We also know what levels of radiation are healthy for human beings. So we can do the calculation to figure out, okay, how long is it going to be before we as humans can go back to Chernobyl and not croak? Okay, it's a long time. Just now, scientists are starting to go back and do some exploration. I think Hannah, you said, did you see that HBO thing? If, you're, if this interests you at all, there's a great documentary on HBO called Chernobyl, and it details how it melted down and the ramifications of it, and it's pretty disturbing. I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. It's a really sad story, but... Question? If we were, like, doing this problem on a test, do we need to, like, write down the approximation for K if we have a story in our no, but you, you probably want to put something as a reference in there so I know that you got the right number. Okay. You know, I, I know, I'm assuming that you're not going to use this number, you're going to use the stored thing, but put something down as a reference. Like a number? I can't leave it as like an actual one half. Oh, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, okay. you can, oh, yeah, yeah. You don't need this step if you have that. Okay. Thanks. Just don't magically say, oh, yeah, I found K. Okay. What is K? Well, it's K. Okay, okay. good. Kayla, you got a question? I figured it out. Okay, good. Notice. 
When I solve this problem, I am not taking the natural log of both sides first. I'm getting rid of the 50. Two fifths is equal to e to the negative 0 0.0004332t. Take the natural log of both sides, divide by that k value, and we'll end up with t. Okay, so the natural log of 2 fifths, be careful with parentheses, divided by point, negative 0 0.0004332 will tell me what t is. Saving us the hassles, t turns out to be 2,105 Sorry, 2,115.085 years. That's a long time. There's also some logic at play here. I know that if T was 1,600, the answer would be 25 milligrams of radium. Since I've lost more than 25 milligrams of radium, my answer has to be bigger than 1,600. Okay. Question so far? All right, one last example, which we're going to run out of time, but I just want to set it up for you, and that is a problem involving Newton's law of cooling, which you may have done in chemistry, maybe physics, maths. Wait, so which, what's the answer to A? Is it 20 equals 50 This is the answer to A. because that K value is constant throughout the entire problem because that's a K value for radium. Okay, so Just right. like this is the K value for that particular bacteria. Okay. 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 That never changes in the problem regardless of what you ask. Think, think of it as like uh, when, you, when you open an investment account, you're gonna have a certain uh, percentage rate for your investment regardless of how much money you invest. Okay. Okay. Newton's law of cooling. This is one where you can't just apply the Purd equation because it doesn't work out that way. So you gotta be careful. Newton's law of cooling, the rate at which the object cools. Okay, let's stop there. I'm gonna use dy dt, where y is the temperature of the object. I didn't use t because that would get confusing unless you wanted to use a capital T, but even then that would be confusing. Okay. The rate at which an object cools is directly proportional to the difference in temperature between the object and the surrounding medium. Okay, That's a fancy way of saying the temperature of the object and the room it's in, which is a room of 75 degrees. Okay, a little physics problem. The universe strives for equilibrium. If you put a hot object in a room, it cools down. If you put a cool object in a hot room, it heats up. But the same is true about the room. It ha it's a direct correspondence. Okay. If I heat up a cup of coffee and let it sit there, the cup of coffee is going to cool down, but the room is also going to heat up. It's just minus. Okay. Now, you can see where this is going to be a little bit different, but not drastically different. It's still gonna follow the same natural log process. Okay, so I would do one over y minus 75 dy is equal to k dt. I took the whole thing with it. I left the 75 attached to the y and I just divided both sides by y minus 75. Oh, because of this. Um, the difference in temperature between the object and the surrounding medium. I define the temperature of the object as Y. Gotcha. Okay. Integral. The natural log. Do I need the absolute value here? Why? Can the temperature of the cup get any colder than the temperature of the room if it's just sitting there? So we're gonna apply a little bit of logic here. If you're not sure, just leave the absolute value in there. But it's a lot easier to solve the problem if you can get rid of the absolute value. Okay. 
The answer to my question is no. The cup cannot go colder than the room or the, the medium that it's in. If you put a, a 120 degree cup of coffee in a room, it's going to decrease down to the temperature of the room and can't go below it. It's also going to raise the temperature of the room a little bit, but that's beside the point. Okay. So in other words, I get y minus 75 is equal to kt plus c. I'm going to assume that you can take it from there. Do the e to the trick, split the c out in front, do the e to the c is c, and when everything is said and done, we get a value for C and, and can go from there. Notice we don't know what the starting temperature is here. That's one of the things you have to solve for. Okay. I'm going to give you the answer and let you solve this on your own. See how you do with it. Say again, Max, I'm sorry. No. Well, okay. I guess it does. So we do know our starting temperature. What we don't know is C, though. You understand why? In in a in a Pert equation, it's a straight up starting amount, ending amount, and exponential. This throws the difference in there. OK, let me just keep going then. Obviously, I'm, I'm confusing you, so we'll do this. Uh, y, whoops. Y minus 75 is equal to CE to the KT. OK, you agree with me so far? Yeah, I got that. I got that pesky 75 to deal with. So yes, you are correct. Our starting temperature is 125, but because the 75 is there, we get that. When t equals 0, this goes away to 1, and therefore c turns out to be 50. So. It breaks down a little bit from what we did with the original PERT equation, because the PERT equation, that C was also always our starting amount. This is now some quantity that we're using in the problem because it's changed the problem a little bit to a Newton's law of cooling. Okay, it's not our starting, the cup doesn't start at 50 degrees. It's the mathematical value for the C term. So our equation becomes Y minus 75 is equal to 50 times e to the kt. Then we can use the 100 and the, um, the 125 and the 100 to solve for k and go from there. Okay. Obviously, we're out of time. The bell's going to ring in two minutes. We didn't have any time to go over the uh, day 59 homework, so therefore, we're going to uh, put all that on hold until um, Monday. We'll do some catch-up on Monday. And uh, then we, this is the end of chapter six, by the way. I told you it was quick. So we'll be looking at a quest to wrap up chapter six before we start our last chapter um, for the year, our last chapter of new material. Cameron, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm just confused. Like, if I was doing this on my own, I would have put 100 into C. Like, how can we know not to do that? Because um, that's. Right, but that's C in a, in a traditional PERT equation. Yeah. C is our starting amount, not our ending amount. Oh. Okay. So I can see where you would put 125 in for C, mm -hmm. but you actually have to put it in for the current starting temperature. Okay. And so what I did is, if if we go, all right, hold on, let me back up. If you take a PERT equation, the reason we solve for C is because at t equals zero, our starting amount is blah blah blah. I kind of skipped that step when we just realized, yeah, it's a starting amount. This one is saying, OK, when t is equal to 0, mm -hmm. then y is equal to 125. Okay. 
then I went and solved for C, and C turns out to be this value of 50. Oh, okay. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Plug in 0 and then 125, and then you yep. got C. Yep. Yeah. Just like on these other ones, when I plug in 0 and 120, or 0 and whatever, 0 in the starting value, you solve for C. Oh, yeah. Bye, everybody.